Hey there, welcome back to another lecture. In this lecture, we are talking about running comparables once you've found a property that you want to submit an offer in on. So once you've searched around, you found a property that you've identified and you are confident that this is the property you want to proceed forward on. You want to submit an offer to the seller and hopefully negotiate a purchase agreement. So one of the first steps you're going to want to do, and preferably your agent will be doing this as long as you have a good, competent, strong buyer's agent that's working for you, one of the first things you're going to be doing is pulling what we call comparable sales or comps. And plain and simple, that is to pull in a radius around the property. The closer, the better, but in some scenarios, you need to spread out further. You want to find as many very closely comparable sales that have actually closed to the property, the subject property you're looking at buying and try to make any minimal adjustments as necessary to justify the price that you want to submit an offer on. Or so for example, if you are submitting an offer on a three bedroom, two bathroom condo in a condo complex and there's 100 units total and yours is 1500 square feet and there are a few other model matches and then there's a few other not model matches that are maybe a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller that have sold in the last 12 months. Ideally, you want to find the model matches, matches, the exact models that are comparable to yours so that you can get the most accurate representation of what buyers have in the past demonstrated they're willing, able, and actually moving forward on them buying. Does that make sense? And it's pretty much the same way an appraiser is going to appraise the property, just not as in depth. But we wanna make sure, first and foremost, that you're submitting a fair offer on your terms. You wanna make sure that you're not overpaying for the property. Secondly, you also wanna be fair and understand what other buyers are willing to spend so that you can also justify your reasoning to the seller. And of course, thirdly, you wanna make sure that the property is going to be able to appraise and that you're gonna be able to move forward and get the loan financing that you are looking for if you're not buying it all cash. So if you find a property, let's say, uh, that is a bit abnormal, it's not really a model match, it's a custom home, we're still gonna to wanna to find as closely similar properties as we can in the area. So let's just say that maybe the home you're buying has a custom pool and all the other ones have pools but they're not as elaborate. Um, or maybe yours has a completely uh, renovated kitchen and hard new hardwood floors. Now these things aren't going to be uh, um, adjustments that you're gonna say, okay, well for every square foot of hardwood floor we are going to use a, you know, it's $5 a foot to install it. No, what you wanna do is you want to use what market comps are telling you is likely going to be uh, the adjustment for that. So if renovated models are selling for, a, you know, X amount more per square foot, or if a pool in general dictates, you know, a $10,000 increase in the sale price because not everybody's looking for a pool, then you're gonna to wanna to apply these sort of minimal adjustments. Now, there's no reason to get too overly analytical on this. The whole point of this is just to determine a starting point, a basis to start from when submitting your original offer for negotiation. And of course, if this is a competitive property and you're expecting that there's gonna be a lot of other buyers submitting offers on it as well, then this is also gonna be important because you want to ideally come up with your highest case scenario. So if you know you want this property, it's important that you take a look at the data and figure out out, okay, well, based on what other similar properties are selling for and what my comfort level is, this is going to be the absolute max I'm willing to offer. And then you can work backwards from there and determine whether or not you want to start off with your highest and best or whether you want to work up to that. Either way, looking at comparable data is going to be an essential first step to making sure that you are moving forward on a successful and wise purchase of real estate. Having the facts behind you and knowing what the other surrounding comparable properties are selling for will help you not only in your strategy in negotiating, but also in your strategy for investment overall. Now, most of the time, you're not gonna get a clear answer as to, oh, this is exactly what this property is worth. That is unless maybe you are working in a condo complex where there's a lot of comparable units, a lot of model matches. That's gonna be a pretty black and white demonstration of what sort of trends, price trends you're seeing, or maybe even the last four or five sales have been the exact same. It's gonna be pretty black and white in that scenario. Now, if you're looking at custom homes or areas that are a bit more uh, obscure, relatively speaking, it's going to take a little bit more of your personal judgment in determining what the value is to you. And of course, a good agent's gonna be able to help you and advise you on adjustments to make to justify the offer that you're looking to submit. Of course, understand this too. In a hot market, 
if there is a lack of comparable sales that uh, justifies whatever the price is that they're asking, but there is really no inventory, and maybe the last few sales were six or seven or eight months ago, it's important to keep in that keep that consideration in mind that uh, the lack of inventory in and of itself is a driver in pushing prices up. And if it's a high demand product, such as a 3-2 in a certain desirable school district, then those sort of things are going to definitely indicate that the property very well will sell for higher than previous comps. Some other considerations to keep in mind when evaluating the offer price when looking at comparables are things such as the characteristics or location of the property. So for example, is the lot size of the subject property or comparable sales larger or smaller? Are either one of them on a busy street or is one on a more quiet street? Is one on a cul-de-sac? Is one a couple blocks away from an elementary school while the other one's completely on the other side of uh, town? Is one on the south side of a major dividing street while the other one is on the north side? Things like this are going to skew the accuracy of comps. So you really wanna make sure that as much as possible, the comparable properties you're looking at are as comparable, not just in characteristics of the property itself, but in location, features, and benefits, and the proximity to what the property is offering. So busy, loud street noise is going to be typically a detrimental factor. On the, on the other hand, if you're at the end of a cul-de-sac in a residential neighborhood, that's typically going to actually help you a little bit. Having a pool, it might be a break even, or in some cases it could even, could even be detrimental, or it could be more desirable, just kind of depending on where you're at and depending on the buyers that are looking in that area. Pools do not always equate to a higher value. Uh, on the other hand, if it's a gorgeous pool with you know custom slides and you know a whole lot of outdoor entertaining space, that could definitely be uh, an indicator of a likely higher sales price. Paying attention to school districts is incredibly important as well. Sometimes you might have a property that is just on the edge of a super desirable school district while another one might just be outside of that. Now, is the one that you're offering on just outside of that? Because if you're using a comparable in a different school district, then that's going to change the actual value of your property. So all good things to keep in mind Keep your mind open. Think about different things that could have different impacts. It could even be things such as, is the street that you're, the particular street you're looking at, does it have good pride of ownership? Do all of the neighbors take good care of their property? Or is it completely ransacked and nobody's mowing the lawn or pulling their weeds? These are all things to keep in mind. Another thing too, for example, is if you are looking at a detached house that is inside of a HOA community, and then you're looking, the only available comparable sales are outside of that HOA community, that is not going to be an accurate representation because one in the HOA community is not comparable to one outside of an HOA community. Community. So you need to make sure that the factors you're comparing align and that they are realistically uh, factors that an appraiser is going to use or another buyer when it comes time to sell your property. Hopefully that's helpful in determining what a good comparable sale property is and I'll see you in the next lecture.